Liquidity ratios problem one. The financial statements of Persimmon Company include the following items. There's a table presenting the information by 20x9 and 20x8. Cash 20x9, $48,500. Cash 20x8, $44,000. Short-term investments 20x9, $28,000. Short-term investments 20x8, $11,000. Net accounts receivable 20x9, $99,000. Net accounts receivable 20x8, $102,000. Merchandise inventory 20x9, $166,000. Merchandise inventory 20x8, $144,000. Total assets 20x9, $529,000. Total assets 20x8, $544,000. Total current liabilities 20x9, $269,000. Total current liabilities 20x8, $290,000. Long term note payable 20x9, $56,000, long-term note payable 20x8, $55,000. What is working capital for 20x9? We're looking for working capital. Working capital is part of the liquidity analysis. Liquidity analysis evaluates the ability of a company to convert current assets into cash. Think about the current assets like cash, what, well, <laughs> other, than, other than the current asset of cash, because again, liquidity analysis is all about the current assets can be converted to cash. We're talking about accounts receivable, short-term investments, merchandise inventory, items that are considered current assets, current assets. That's really what the liquidity analysis is all about, and working capital is part of that. Now, various ratios under liquidity analysis, we've got current position ratios, accounts receivable analysis ratios, and inventory analysis. This would be working capital would be under the current position. So working capital, current ratio, quick ratio. We're specifically focused here on, on the working capital. The working capital ratio itself is just current assets, like I mentioned before, current assets minus current liabilities. Current liabilities. That's all we're focusing on in this specific question. Now we're asked specifically about 20x9 in this question. We can go ahead and eliminate 20x8. We don't have to look anything in that column. That's all going to be ignored. So we can go ahead, put lines through that. We can ignore 20x8. As I mentioned earlier, liquidity analysis is all about the current position. And specifically, current position analysis evaluates a company's ability to pay its current liabilities. So this information helps short-term creditors determine how quickly they will be repaid. And as I mentioned, working capital, current ratio, and quick ratio are the main ones. We're focusing, though, on the working capital ratio or calculation. The working capital, which again, current assets minus current liabilities, and we're focused just on 20x9, is used to evaluate a company's ability to pay current liabilities. That's why it's current assets minus current liabilities. A company's working capital is often monitored monthly, quarterly, or yearly by creditors and other debtors. However, it's difficult to use working capital to compare companies of different sizes because you're looking at just a number rather than percentage. That's one thing when you're looking at percentages versus numbers. If it's a larger company, yeah, it could be a larger amount. If it's a smaller company, it could be a smaller amount. Just keep that in mind. That's why percentages are usually the, the preferred amount. So all we have to do here is go through all of our items and determine which of these, are, if, if any, are current assets and which of these, if any, are current liabilities. So cash. Is cash considered a current asset? Yes. So we are going to put the cash in there. So we're going to put CA for current asset. What about short-term investments? Short-term investments, is that current asset? Yes. Yes. What about net accounts receivable? Yes. That is a current asset. What about merchandise inventory? Yes, current asset. And then total assets, of course, we don't include um, total assets on there unless these are the only assets of the company because total assets could also have property plan equipment, intangible assets, goodwill, things like that that aren't considered current assets. Could have long-term uh, receivables as well. And then we have total long-term, I'm sorry, total, we have total current liabilities which are given here and that's right there, current liabilities. So all we have to do is just add up our current assets which for current assets, we've got 48,000 500 cash, again, 20x9 is what we're focusing on. We've got the short-term investments of $28,000, so we add that. So current, or sorry, short-term investments, $28,000, 20x9. We've got the net receivables, net accounts receivable of $99,000, so we go ahead and add that. And finally, our merchandise inventory, we have $166,000. This, these four items make up our current assets. So these are the current assets. Now we're going to subtract away our current liabilities, which we're told right here is $269,000. We have that already totaled. 
So we're going to subtract $269,000. So we add our current assets in the four items, subtract the current liabilities. We're going to get our working capital amount when you do that calculation. Well, let me add up the current assets first. The current assets, those equal $341,500. And then our current liabilities, $269,000. When we subtract those away from one another, we're going to get working capital of $72,500. And that is the answer for working capital, $72,500. And we're done. Boom. Working capital, we've got our current assets minus our current liabilities to help us evaluate a company's ability to pay current liabilities.